Jason here, Blood Church, coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you. Going to do a video on the next, um, I guess, my top days for a rapture. Uh, I don't, I'm not saying the rapture will be this year, not a prediction of the rapture, just if I'm looking at the days of the year, what would be the number one and number two days that the rapture could happen? Uh, again, if you're new to the channel, subscribe, thumbs up. We're a group of Bible-believing Christians waiting for... Our bridegroom, yes, waiting for Jesus, uh, Jesus Christ to appear in the air and rapture us in order to have eternal life with him, in order to receive eternal life. It's easy. Jesus Christ died on the cross 2,000 years ago. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 tells a story where he died. He was buried and rose on the third day. And he died on that cross, shed his blood for the remission and forgiveness of our sins. All you have to do is believe with your heart and confess with your mouth unto salvation. It is a free gift. Nothing else added to it. Feast of Trumpets um, is a largely overshadowed Jewish holiday. Uh, it falls under Rosh Hashanah today, and it's known for um, a day of rest, no labor. It's also to be held on the first day of the seventh month, and it's based upon the moon and when it is first spotted by um, from Jerusalem, used to be Sanhedrin used to go out to look for it. And so we didn't know the day or the hour, which would follow Matthew 4, 20, Matthew 24, 36 quite well. It was days for the Jews of blowing of the trumpet. There were offerings, burnt offerings, meal offerings, sin offerings, and other, other offerings that were performed, as well as um, just a day of remembrance, a day of atonement, a day of considered to be judgment, to pass judgment for the sins of the Jews, or whether they be forgiven or not. In terms of the Christian church, uh, it is a time, um, Feats of Trumpets, where we I consider it to be a possible rapture date, because 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty two at a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. You see at the last trump in that verse, um, speaks to an idiom which refers directly to the Feast of Trumpets. And that the day that no man knows is actually a, Jew, a Jewish idiom as well to refer to the Feast of Trumpets. And we lack, Christians do, the understanding of Jewish traditions and idioms and culture, as well as their festivals, although I think there are a lot of videos on them that you can, you can educate yourself about them. And this idiom deals with the moon cycle. Jewish calendar, unlike our Gregorian calendar in the West, operates on about a 30-day each, each month. Um, and so the moon goes from darkness to light and then back to darkness again during this period of time. The Feast of Trumpets begins, we mentioned on this, it's the first day of the seventh month when the two witnesses go out and, and, and they, they see um, the moon. And these are... You know, these feast days are Moedim, so God's appointed times. Um, of course, the Jewish day in general just starts at sundown and ends in the day, which is not what the, we, we in the Western world will do. This is important because the rapture will happen in the twinkling of an eye, which also is an idiom that refers to a specific set of hours during the day, which the Jew would know about if you, if you were in the Old Testament or even possibly today. So it's, it's, in fact, true that there's two times of the day when it's the twinkling of an eye, sunset and sunrise. So it is, again, a set of hours, but we don't know exactly which one. Twinkling of an eye, how quick is the twinkling of an eye? Well, if you look at the Hebrew word rega, it means that both at rest and, and to set in motion at the same time. And we really don't have an English word to translate. I guess the, what comes to mind would be the time it takes for a hand of a clock to move. So, too, is the Hebrew word for motion, or riga. Uh, Paul uses the Greek word atamos for riga, and when he used, when he wrote 1 Corinthians 15 and 52, when referring to the coming of the Lord. And so this would be a motion so fast you could even hardly notice the motion. And, of course, logically, the blink of an eye would be very quick in English, as, you know, if we take about our meaning for it as well. At the last trump, again, this is a Jewish idiom specifically tied to Feast of Trumpets. And there is a set of 100 trumpet blasts. And the last trump is a reference to the Tika Gudla, which is the last trump 
100th or the 100th trumpet blast. Um, this is not the same as Revelation chapter 11, 15 through 19, the trumpet, the seventh tr- trumpet judgment. There's no comfort in that any of those Revelation seals as they bring forth war, famine, plagues, death, and even creatures from the pits of hell. Therefore, the rapture for the churches is before. It's a pre-tribulational event that is to help the church be avoided from wrath and does bring comfort where the, the seals of, of Revelation do not bring any any comfort. If we look at the, the, we examine all the trumpet blows during the Feast of Trumpets, you have the taka, which is a long single blast. It was straight, plain, smooth, and continuous note. Symbolize, it is symbolized the expression of joy and contentment. Uh, you have the Torah, which is extremely short blast, combination of nine staccato notes and a very quick succession of short trill. And then you have um, the Tekai Gula, which means the last trump. This one symbolizes the hope of redemption, which I sort of like what it symbolizes for our rapture, amen. It's a very long you know, final note. It's it's the 100th and of after the 99. And so how does Jesus fulfill these feast days so far? Uh, you know, this is the one way to look at it, that we have the spring feast and we have the fall feast. Jesus Christ, our Lord, was slain on Passover, buried on unleavened bread, and he rose from the dead on first fruits. All those would be uh, spring feast. Fifty days later at Shavuot, which is Pentecost, the apostles in the upper room received the Holy Spirit at Acts 2.1. And then you have the fall feast yet to be fulfilled, the next being the Feast of Trumpets. So if we if we follow tradition that Jesus was 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 fulfilling the feast days during his time on earth, then the Feast of Trumpets would be next. And again, the rapture does not have to be on Feast of Trumpets. It, it could be any day of the year, as God knows the perfect time for his rapture. But I just think it makes it makes a great case for the number one or number two uh, days, because we're not sure of the day or the hour with the Feast of Trumpets. And we know that these feast days are holy convocations, um, and they're a rehearsal. God's appointed times, or may, 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 you know, Makkah, Kadesh, um, you know, we're to pay attention to them. So with that being said, you know, I do pay attention to those days. Tell me your thoughts. Do you believe the Feast of Trumpets makes logical sense? It, yeah, again, not not predicting the year. I don't know when it will be. be nice if it was this year, as I think many are hoping. Anyway, God bless. Have a great day.